So there's this book called The 48 Laws of Power by Robert Greene, and boy, has it caused quite a stir. Some folks say it's controversial because it encourages sketchy tactics to gain power, like deception and manipulation. Even Newsweek claimed that Greene has actually produced one of the best arguments since the New Testament for humility and obscurity. Greene and others came up with these laws based on historical observations, offering advice on how to climb the power ladder, even if it means resorting to not-so-nice methods. Opinions are divided, though. Some people think the book's advice is useful and eye-opening, while others are like, nah, this is morally wrong. Critics argue that it promotes a fear-based, exploitative worldview that's just not cool in the long run. As a security precaution, numerous American prisons have prohibited the presence of green books, the 48 Laws of Power, and the 33 Strategies of War. On the flip side, supporters say it's just a realistic view of power dynamics, and it can be used for good or evil, depending on your intentions. They also argue it helps protect you from being manipulated by others. All in all, whether you think it's controversial or not is up to you, but no doubt it's stirred up some serious debates about power and how to get it. But before discussing the controversy over the book, please do not forget to subscribe the channel for more enriching content, and share your thoughts about this book in the comments below. Here are some of the specific reasons why the book could be considered controversial. One, the counsel provided in the book often involves manipulation and lacks ethical considerations. Two, the book's perspective on the world centers on fear, deceit, and taking advantage of others. Three, the recommendations given in the book are unlikely to be effective over the long term. Four, despite being presented as self-help material, the book's guidance could potentially have negative consequences for those who adopt it. Let's delve into these controversial aspects of the book one by one. The 48 Laws of Power by Robert Greene gets a lot of criticism for being seen as manipulative and unethical. Here's why. The book lays out these 48 laws for gaining and holding onto power, and some of them suggest using tactics that many folks find pretty shady. Think deception, manipulation, and even violence in some cases. Critics argue that the book kind of glorifies these tactics, making them seem like a smart way to get ahead. And that's where the ethical red flags pop up. The advice it offers can be seen as promoting a mindset that's all about self-interest, regardless of the impact on others. Some people are like, hey, these laws reflect the real world, so it's good to be aware of them. But others counter that it's not just about awareness. It's about how you use this knowledge. Using manipulation and deception to achieve your goals can hurt others and create a toxic environment. So basically, the book gets called out for advocating strategies that might get you power but at the cost of your morals and the well-being of others. It's like a guide to power that some folks consider a little too sketchy for comfort. People often criticize the perspective presented in The 48 Laws of Power for being built on fear, deception, and exploitation. Here's why they feel that way. Fear. The book suggests that to achieve and retain power, you should make others fear either you or the consequences of opposing you. This approach can create a tense environment where people are always wary and afraid of making mistakes. Critics say this approach fosters a culture of insecurity and fear, which isn't a healthy or sustainable way of functioning. Deception. A lot of the laws in the book advise using tricks and manipulation to outsmart others and accomplish your goals. While Green might argue this is about clever thinking, critics see it as endorsing dishonesty and sneaky methods. Encouraging deception damages trust and honesty which are crucial for establishing good relationships in effective organizations. Exploitation. Some of the laws in the book appear to support exploiting others for personal benefit. This might involve taking advantage of people's weaknesses or vulnerabilities. Critics contend that this mindset encourages a self-centered and predatory attitude where the focus is on using others rather than collaborating and acting ethically. Overall, the critique comes from the perspective that the book's advice promotes a worldview where power is achieved by stepping on others, and where strategies involving fear, deception, and exploitation are deemed acceptable means to an end. Critics argue that this stance undermines positive human values and contributes to a harmful and negative social and professional atmosphere. The guidance provided in the book is commonly regarded as not viable in the long term due to several reasons. The book's emphasis on manipulation and deceit can gradually erode trust. If people become aware of these tactics, they are less inclined to trust or collaborate with you. 
Developing enduring trustworthy relationships necessitates honesty and openness. While utilizing fear and exploitation might yield short-term benefits, it often leads to resentment and consequences as individuals start feeling used or mistreated. This can undermine the stability of power dynamics. Relying on fear and manipulation can result in social isolation. People might distance themselves apprehensive of your tactics. This isolation can restrict your access to resources, information, and assistance. Adhering to the book's advice may introduce ethical dilemmas that weigh on your conscience over time. Living by a strategy of deception and manipulation can be emotionally taxing and corrode your sense of integrity. Power dynamics are fluid and situations evolve. What proves effective in one situation might not be applicable in another. Rigorously following the book's principles can hinder adaptability, leaving you ill-equipped to navigate changing scenarios. Long-term success often hinges on cooperation and collaboration. The book's tactics prioritize exploiting others, which can impede your ability to foster enduring partnerships vital for sustained progress. Employing fear and manipulation may secure compliance, but it does not necessarily foster loyalty. Your reputation may suffer, making it challenging to sustain influence over time. The book's recommendations can create an unpredictable environment where people are uncertain about your intentions. This unpredictability can lead to instability and anxiety, making it tough to maintain a consistent power base. In essence, while the book's strategies could yield short-term advantages, they frequently neglect the significance of ethical conduct, authentic relationships, and flexibility. Relying solely on fear, deception, and exploitation is likely to be unsustainable and counterproductive in the long run. The so-called self-help content in the book might actually be detrimental to individuals who adhere to its guidance for a few reasons. The book's advice encourages tactics that often disregard ethical considerations. Following such advice can lead individuals to compromise their moral values in pursuit of power, potentially causing guilt, remorse, and a loss of self-respect. Emphasizing manipulation, deception, and exploitation can damage personal and professional relationships. People may become wary of someone who consistently uses such tactics, leading to isolation and a lack of genuine connections. Engaging in manipulative behavior erodes trust. People who follow the book's strategies might find themselves distrusted and ostracized, making it difficult to build lasting relationships based on honesty and authenticity. The tactics suggested in the book might yield immediate results, but they can also spark resentment and retaliation from those who feel manipulated. This can lead to isolation and hostility, undermining any sustainable power structure. Constantly employing tactics of manipulation and power games can be emotionally taxing. It can lead to stress, anxiety, and a constant need to guard against potential threats or rivals. And fear might lead to compliance, but they rarely inspire genuine loyalty or positive cooperation. Leaders who rely on such tactics may struggle to maintain a motivated and cohesive team. Achieving power through manipulation doesn't necessarily lead to personal fulfillment. Individuals may find that their accomplishments feel hollow if they were attained by exploiting others. The book's tactics often prioritize short-term gains over long-term success. This approach might result in immediate victories, but it can hinder sustainable growth and development. In summary, while the book's strategies may offer quick wins in terms of gaining power, they often come at the cost of ethical integrity, genuine relationships, and personal well-being. This can lead to negative consequences for individuals who follow its advice, both in their personal lives and in their interactions within society. While the 48 Laws of Power often faces criticism, some proponents argue that there are potential advantageous aspects to its guidance. The book sheds light on power dynamics and their functioning in diverse scenarios. Comprehending these dynamics can aid individuals in skillfully navigating intricate social and professional situations. Gaining knowledge about manipulative strategies can empower individuals to identify attempts by others to employ these strategies against them, allowing them to safeguard themselves from exploitation. The book prompts readers to critically evaluate situations and consider multiple perspectives. This can enhance their capacity to analyze complex scenarios and arrive at well-informed decisions. The strategies delineated in the book underscore the importance of strategic thinking and forward planning. Although a few strategies might involve manipulation, this mindset can also be employed for positive purposes, such as anticipating challenges and devising innovative solutions. Specific laws in the book champion assertiveness and self-confidence, which can be advantageous for individuals striving to bolster their self-assurance and assert their positions. Comprehending power dynamics can enrich negotiation skills. By discerning sources of power and influence, individuals can adeptly navigate negotiations, culminating in mutually advantageous agreements. The book's emphasis on adaptability and flexibility could aid individuals in effectively responding to evolving circumstances and surmounting challenges with a planned strategy. The book employs historical examples to illustrate its principles, 
providing readers with insights into the historical manifestation of power dynamics. This historical context also can yield valuable insights and broaden one's grasp of human behavior. In the world of literature, few books have sparked as much debate as The 48 Laws of Power by Robert Greene. As we've explored in this video, the book's content has evoked strong reactions from critics and supporters alike. Kirkus Review, for example, boldly pointed out the alleged inconsistencies within Greene's laws and labeled the book as utterly nonsensical. However, controversy often fuels curiosity, and despite the polarizing opinions, The 48 Laws of Power continues to maintain its popularity. With translations in over 35 languages, the book's reach is undeniable. Its insights into the intricate dynamics of power have resonated with many readers, garnering praise for shedding light on a complex facet of human interaction. Yet, a word of caution is necessary. The controversy surrounding the book stems from its advice that can be perceived as manipulative, unethical, and even harmful. Whether you're drawn to its insights or wary of its approach, The 48 Laws of Power is undeniably a thought-provoking read. As you embark on this literary adventure, be prepared to engage with its controversial themes and form your own conclusions. Poetics of Success serves as your guide to self-enhancement, attaining financial liberation, unleashing success, and realizing your utmost potential. Let's carry on this voyage of preparing our minds for heightened success collectively. Thank you for joining us in this discussion. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe for more interesting content. Share your valuable insights regarding this controversial book. Until our next video, remain inspired and persistently pursue excellence.